The coronavirus is a respiratory disease. It attacks the lungs and other organs in its attempt to infect its host. But it has another strategy, air pollution. Scientists believe it uses fine particulate matter as a carrier. Studies show the pollution also lays the groundwork for the virus, aggravating the throat and lungs to make us more susceptible to COVID. A toxic and potentially deadly partnership, air pollution and COVID-19. An invisible killer and its little helper. A lot of cities around the world have been promising to clean up their act and clear the air. Now they've got another reason to act, the coronavirus. There are many sources of particulate air pollution. The primary one is emissions from combustion in power plants, planes and car engines. Vehicles also produce particles through brake wear and tyre abrasion. Agricultural emissions are also a big contributor. Particles invisible to the naked eye are classified by diameter. PM10 are 10 micrometres or smaller. Fine, inhalable particles have diameters of 2.5 micrometres or less, and then there are ultra-fine particles, less than 0.1 micrometres in diameter. Depending on their size and how deeply they penetrate tissue, inhaled particles have different effects on health. We believe that the smaller the particulate matter is, the greater the probability is that it will reach the bloodstream after inhalation and be taken up by the cardiovascular system. These tiny particles can build up in arteries and damage their insides, and that's where the SARS-CoV-2 virus also causes much of its most serious damage, as recent studies show. The decisive point is that we have discovered that the virus infection in COVID-19 mainly affects the inner layer of the blood vessels, the so-called endothelial cells, and, as it happens, that is also the target of fine particulate matter. There's a strong correlation between air pollution and COVID-19 mortality rates. The risk of dying from the disease is higher the longer we're exposed to air polluted with these particles. That's the result of a study co-authored by the scientist in Mainz. It came to the conclusion that a stunning 15% of COVID-19 related deaths worldwide are linked to long-term exposure to air pollution. Based on health records, the authors say that the figure for North America amounts to 17%, 19% for Europe and about 27% in East Asia. This highlights the risks posed by air pollution even before the pandemic. We currently have more than one million deaths from the coronavirus pandemic, but we know that particulate matter causes nearly nine million deaths per year worldwide. That's an indication of how much attention the coronavirus is getting compared to particulate pollution. I believe we need a rethink. Scientists say policymakers need to do more to combat air pollution and they need to take the recommendations of the World Health Organization seriously. We need limits for fine particulate matter that protect us from their impact on health. The WHO defines a limit of 10 micrograms per cubic metre as healthy, while 90% of the world population effectively lives above that limit. The correlation between air pollution and health outcomes exists, even if the connection hasn't been directly proven so far. Many scientists are convinced that very high levels of particulate matter in the air we breathe weakens our immune response. And that's a matter of grave concern, especially in the time of the coronavirus. Joel Slielefeld is managing director of the Max Planck Institute for Chemistry in Mainz, where he heads the Department of Atmospheric Chemistry and led that study we mentioned in the report. You found exposure to particulate air pollution contributes 15% to COVID mortality. How did you get to that result? Yes, well, we are combining data. And primarily, we were using a study in the United States that made use of uh, an analysis of uh, 65 million uh, uh, people who participated in Medicare. And there they had analyzed uh, uh, the relationship between air pollution and premature death from COVID. How do you manage to measure something so tiny as this fine particulate matter that we mentioned? Yes, well, you can measure it directly, for example, in air quality networks. 
but we also make use of measurements from space. Uh, because these small particles that can enter your lungs are also about the same size as the uh, wavelength of the light that comes from the sun. So they scatter the sunlight, they reflect the sunlight, and from, from a space instrument, you can see them quite well. It sounds like fascinating stuff, but at the end of the day, the more polluted your skies are, the higher the risk of catching COVID. Is, is that right? Well, it's actually more the, the air pollution causes preconditions or it aggravates preconditions that uh, cause a more severe um, outcome of COVID-19. So you can't really say it's possible, but it's something we don't know that air pollution causes or allows COVID-19 to become uh, that you get infected more easily. But the, the, the main reason we think is that air pollution causes preconditions that aggravate uh, the COVID-19 outcome. I guess then that the uh, great lockdown was a great thing in that air pollution fell in many cities, meaning fewer COVID carrying particles around and, and less aggravation. Yes, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that. This is possible. But this will be this direct effect. For example, if air pollution triggers the body to be more receptive of, uh, of the virus, that would certainly be reduced with, with the COVID lockdown. But the point is, is that the long-term exposure to air pollution causes chronic diseases like lung diseases, including lung cancer, cardiovascular diseases, heart conditions, etc. And these are exactly the conditions that make the suffering from COVID more severe. So it's, it's more the preconditioning, actually, that, that uh, where the air pollution plays a role. So we can't just be tackling uh, the COVID pandemic. We need to be tackling air pollution. Definitely we will, yeah. And it's just another example of air pollution causing uh, diseases. And of course, it, it is already a factor we knew that causes uh, life expectancy to be shorter. But now we also see that there's a direct relationship with COVID-19, which is not entirely surprising because the disease actually, you know, through the lungs, through the uh, cardiovascular system uh, is very similar as the effects of, of uh, air pollution. And that again is very similar as the effects of smoking, which is also a precondition that makes the outcome of COVID-19 more severe. I understand why it's, it took the world so long to understand the dangers of tobacco, considering the huge corporations behind the advertising campaigns. But <clears throat> what about air pollution? I mean, why has it taken us so long to catch on to the fact that it's bad for us? Yes, well, many people have known this for a long time, but it's, of course, not so easy to do something about it. I mean, in Europe, we have, uh, we have programs trying to reduce air pollution, but it, it has, of course, economic implications. Uh, it's not only a cost factor in terms of, you know, reducing the emissions. Of course, you gain on the other side because you have less health expenses. But, you know, this is a system that needs to be politically controlled because the, the person who who profits from better air quality is not the person who would have to pay for reducing it. So this is really a question of putting policies in place and making sure that those who actually pay for the mitigation measures or the reduction of pollution also in some way profit and not are the only ones to pay for it. George Lady Fed, Managing Director of the Max Planck Institute for Chemistry in Mainz. Thank you very much. BioNTech and Pfizer are applying in the US for emergency use of their COVID vaccine. They're the first to do so. The companies say a good safety record should qualify it for use before final testing is complete. A limited number of shots could be ready next month. And for more time this week, here's Derek Williams, our science correspondent, answering your questions on the coronavirus. Why are mortality rates so low in a densely populated country like India? India has the second highest number of reported COVID-19 cases in the world behind the U.S., but has only logged about half as many deaths. So to put that in terms that we've all become familiar with, um, it appears to have an extremely low case fatality rate compared 
to most Western countries. Why? We don't know, but the experts trying to puzzle it out say a number of different factors are probably playing roles. Um, first, of course, is that almost all agree that underreporting is involved. As they say, that India struggled to record accurate death statistics under, under normal circumstances before the pandemic. And if anything, health officials have been struggling more since it began. But, but is, is there more to it than that? Another line of thinking says young average age in India's population uh, could also be making a difference. Uh, and then there are some researchers who believe that what's known as the hygiene hypothesis uh, could be involved. It postulates that people exposed to more pathogens early in life are less likely to develop the overreactive immune systems later, which cause autoimmune conditions uh, like allergies. And as we know, Many, if not most, COVID-19 patients die basically because of an autoimmune reaction that, that spins out of control. So are a lot more Indians surviving because their immune systems had to learn to deal with a much wider range of pathogens as, as children? And they don't go into a tailspin now when they catch SARS-CoV-2? Maybe. Um, it's an interesting hypothesis, but, but it's also one that's hard to prove. And, and by the way, uh, many of the same arguments are being used to explain what's going on in most of Africa, where people also aren't getting as sick and, and dying at rates that experts initially predicted they would.